Computer cases have definitely evolved over the years. More and more cases now come with decent design and features without having the need to spend heaps amount of money. This is my brother 7 year old PC which has a cooler master N300 as the case. We're gonna be transferring all the parts from this to this. The InPlay Meteor 3. Let's find out if you should get it. Available in black or white, the InPlay Meteor 3 is a mid-tower that can support an ATX, micro-ATX, and mini-ITX motherboards. It also comes with a tempered glass side panel which makes your glorious build visible and pleasing to look at. It was a bit hard to unscrew the tempered glass side panel at the beginning as they were on too tight. You might initially need a screwdriver, but after that, you can easily screw and unscrew it by hand. It has this rubber that serves as padding between the case and the tempered glass. The front cover is not a flat mesh. It has an uneven design which is actually new to me and I kinda like it, although you won't really notice it from a distance. At the top part of the case, we have the power button, one USB 3, two USB 2, one headphone jack, one microphone jack, a reset, and an LED button, which are kind of hard to press. You might need to use your nails to be able to actually press them. It also includes a magnetic dust filter for the top fans. Speaking of fans, it can hold up to three 120mm fan on the front, two 120mm fans at the top, and one 120mm fan at the back. At the bottom is a full power supply shroud, which I personally think is essential for any build nowadays. Especially if you're using a non-modular power supply, it really helps with hiding ugly cables. You can pass the front panel connectors through these holes, which don't have rubber grommets. One of them, however, may be hard to utilize because of the power supply being in the way. There are also fan mounts and SSD mounts at the top of the shroud, but there's actually no SSD trace for it, and the SSD mount actually gets in the way of the fan blades if you are going to mount some fans. I got really confused with this part of the design, but at the end of the day, these are the only number of fans and hard drives you can put inside the case, as stated on the box. It has a drive bay that can be detached by unscrewing two screws at the bottom, which supports up to two 3.5 mechanical hard drives or two 2.5 inch SSDs. You can have a combination of two of the same hard drives, one of each, but unfortunately, not both. You do have the option of leaving your SSD unmounted, which is totally safe since it doesn't have any moving parts. Also, the second location for the SSD is kind of stupid anyway. See what I'm saying? The feet are attached by screws and can be easily removed by unscrewing it like this. It can be handy if you're gonna be painting the feet or the case with different colors. By measuring things myself, I found that it can support graphics cards up to 290mm long if you're using regular 120mm fan at the front. And for CPU coolers, it can support coolers up to 150mm tall, but I think you can extend it up to 165mm. I just think that would be too close to the temper glass side panel. Moving to the back of the case, in terms of expandability, we have up to 7 PCI slots, which I think the average gamer won't really be making full use of. As for this part, which I don't really know what it's called, but its main purpose is to cover the screws of the GPU, or pretty much anything that you would attach to the PCI slots. It uses a regular screw, but I think it would have been better if they used thumb screw for this because it's just easier to remove. The case also comes with its own speaker, which is this one. It's the one that does that beeping sound when you turn on the PC. But unfortunately, for this setup, the graphics card is in the way of the pins. It's a bit light, especially with the side panels off, but the materials don't feel cheap at all. Here's me trying to bend the side panel. Now with all of those being said, should you buy it? Airflow is decent, looks are decent, and cable management is somewhat decent. What more could you ask for? These are the couple of cons that I want to mention though. The stupid SSD mount at the bottom. You can only add a few hard drives so this isn't really for the people who are crazy with the number of stores that they have. And again, not really sure what the mounts on the power supply shroud are for, but it's not mentioned in the specs nor did the case come with any manual. I also want to mention that there's little to no space between the side panel and the motherboard tray, so it's kind of hard to route cables behind it. You're gonna have to utilize the caved-in part of the case where you could squeeze all the cables in, but I can only see that as a problem if you have too many cables in your build. Overall, it's a nice looking case for the price. Honestly, after transferring all the parts from the Cooler Master N300, 
it occurred to me that it's a bit ridiculous how the PC case may add perceived value to your build. If I had no experience with PC building and you switched the old Cooler Master with this case and you told me you upgraded my computer, I would definitely believe you. This is why it's important if we're not familiar, familiar? <laughs> if we're not familiar with PC building at all, to consult at least a friend that knows a thing or two to help us out. That being said, I can definitely see this PC case being used on somebody's build and immediately thinking that it's a mid-range PC regardless of the actual specs inside. How about you? What's the PC case that you're currently using? Let us know in the comments below. That wraps up this case. Feel free to drop a like if this helped you out. Get subscribed for more content like this and I'll see you guys on the next video.